Your child is not an Ishmael. Hi, everyone. Um, you know, there was a time when I felt everything accumulated out of God, out of God's will. Um, it's an Ishmael, including children, until the Lord shed some light to this. Now, for us to have a better understanding of the Ishmael story, we have to look carefully at the circumstances leading to his birth. Now, God promised Abraham and Sarah a child. A promise was made. But this was just more than God promising Abraham and Sarah a child. It was like a child slash covenant, which God was making with the couple. Okay? So now, God promised them a child. So they, they, they went through different emotions, you know, excitement, uh, perhaps doubt every once in a while, and then their faith began to grow and all of that. Okay? But a time came when they began to be weary and they kept on thinking about this life. God promised uh, this gift. God promised, but why has he not delivered? It was then that they began to work on their plan B. So for one to have produced an Ishmael, they must have had a knowledge of God's plan and they should have made a deliberate decision to go against it or to form a plan B. So they knew of the promise and when they did not see the promise coming to fruition, they decided to help God. It was then that um, Abraham had a child with, with the servant and Ishmael was born. Then it is not fair for us to say that children who are born out of kingdom marriages are Ishmaels. For a child to be an Ishmael, there are conditions that must be met. Did you know about God's will for your life? Did you know about God's promise? Did God make a covenant for you? Were you awaiting God's promise when you decided to go against it? You know, we need to look at that. So if you were just living your life thinking that you were in God's will, or you knew you were out of God's will, but did not know anything better about the covenant or anything of the sort, then we cannot in any way say that those children are Ishmael's. God lets nothing go to waste. And let us understand that God is sovereign. He's all powerful. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. So if God did not want children to be born, he would have closed the womb. There are women who have been in relationships and in marriages where they tried for children and it never happened. And when they married again, and then they were able to have children. So the Lord is able to close the womb. Now, every situation that the Lord allows is because it's going to benefit us one way or the other. Your time with the counterfeit, our time with the counterfeit, we are learning, we are growing in that time. So God has allowed it. So let us not put that pressure upon ourselves like um, calling all that we have worked for, all that we've accomplished outside of God's plan as, as an Ishmael. Let us consider when did God give Abraham and Sarah the map, the, the promise? It was before a child was conceived. But now if God comes to you after the fact, after you have accumulated things, after you have had children, how is that an Ishmael? It was all part of God's plan. And you know it was God's plan. Look at the children. Look at how gifted those children are. Some of you have children who are walking in the prophetic. Some of you have children that are dreamers. Some of you have children that are intercessors. They are still young, yet walking in God's light. God used those children to help you to be focused. Some of you have been through so much. If it was not for those children, you would have given up. So those children have kept you going, have kept you fighting. So now we can speak of kingdom marriage because there was someone whom God allowed in your life as a pillar to keep you going. It might not have been the most straightest pillar there is, but it was still a pillar. It held you. It could have been a cracked or chipped pillar, but it still did the work of a pillar. It still held something. You know, whatever that, that was in your life, 
that you feel when you look back it was not really god's plan for you initially we also have to look at the purpose in which it served so god allowed what he allowed to grow us whether good or bad whether good or bad so let us not be quick to look at children and say they are ishmaels if god had appeared to you in a dream in a vision or through a prophecy and you were told that ABC was going to happen and you were supposed to wait on the promises of the Lord and you decided to go on ahead of that. Then you can say what you have is an Ishmael. But if that is not the case, then those children will also be able to, to enjoy the, the, they're able to enjoy the blessings. Um, where, um, where, what scripture can I use to support this? I'm reminded of Lot. I'm remember. I'm reminded of Lot. Abraham could have left Lot behind, but Lot had no parents, so they needed Lot, and Lot needed them. So at that particular time, they had no promise. They were just living their lives, and God told Abraham to leave his mother, his father, his people, and his country to go to a land where God would show him. So Abraham left with faith. He left with Lot. God allowed Lot to be born. God allowed Lot to grow as a child, to as a firstborn child to, um, to Abraham and to Sarah. And if you study closely the life of Lot, he grew also in the fear of the Lord because he kept that constant relationship with Abraham. Okay, and even when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, he was found worthy to escape. And another thing, for even him to separate completely from Abraham and Sarah, it was because the flocks were the, the flocks were too much, the blessings were too much. So he did get the blessing. He did get the blessing. So yes, the children will get blessings just as Lot got the blessing. And even after Lot has had had grown and established himself, had a family, and he ran into trouble, Abraham did come through did come through for him so the same as with these children they may not be born into kingdom marriage but they will reap the 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 the, the benefits you know the blessings the advice and all of that especially considering that in most cases both parties have children both parties have children so let us understand and appreciate god's love that God brings together, he does not uh, pull apart, he does not break apart. So the children that the man has in his heart, he might want to bring them into the home and start the family with the woman and vice versa. So let us also be relaxed in terms of um, are the children coming into the picture? Are the children going to the mom's side? Are the children going to the dad? Let us be relaxed and allow God to let the situation play out. The only thing I can say about children is that children are a blessing of God. And before you know it, they're already out there living their lives. So let us build them. Let us love them. Let us fill them with the love and the word of God. Okay. So yeah. Thank you guys. God bless.